During the 19th century, America was shaped and developed in many ways. With the government being shaped into an entirely different kind of government, America was no short in political developments either. The Louisiana Purchase was the largest land deal America has ever made. In 1803, Thomas Jefferson oversaw the purchase of nearly 872,000 square miles of land from France. Spanning from modern day Montana to Louisiana, Jefferson believed that the best way to guarantee the long term integrity of the Republic was to cultivate a nation of independent yeoman farmers. He purchased this land, hoping to provide enough land so future generations would be allowed free land without the need to work for others. The question of slavery in the Western lands was the most contentious problem in American politics. Northern advocates of free labor and Southern defenders of slavery each sought victory through the Western expansion of their labor systems. If the new states that emerged from the Louisiana Territory were all free, then the balance of power in the U.S. Senate would tilt decisively against slavery, or vice versa. Many of the events leading up to the Civil War was centered on Louisiana Territory. Before the War of 1812, Britain had been locked in a war with Napoleon Bonaparte's France. Britain had started to block American trade ships to keep supplies from going into France. In 1807, Britain passed the Orders in Council, which required neutral countries to obtain a license from its authorities before trading with France or French colonies, which outraged America. Even more vexing was the British practice of searching American vessels for contraband, which had been defined by the British as goods that was declared illegal. The British had also seized native-born Americans and put them into service on their British ships. Fed up with the British, America formally declared war in 1812. During the war, America suffered many defeats at the hands of British, Canadian, and Native American forces. American troops were, however, able to repulse British invasions in New York, Baltimore, and New Orleans, boosting national confidence and fostering a new spirit of patriotism. The ratification of the Treaty of Ghent on February 17, 1815, ended the war. Nonetheless, many in the United States celebrated the War of 1812 as a second war of independence, beginning a new era of national pride. Abraham Lincoln was the very first president elected from the Republican Party. Because of the issue of slavery, America had been in political turmoil. On the day of Lincoln's inauguration, seven of the southern slave-owning states seceded from the nation, formally establishing the Confederate States of America. One month later, the American Civil War began when Confederate forces under General T.G.T. Brigard opened fire on Union-held Fort Sumner in South Carolina. In 1863, as the tide turned against the Confederacy, Lincoln passed the Emancipation Proclamation, which, although didn't immediately free all the slaves, began the process which eventually ended slavery in America. In 1864, Lincoln won re-election. In April 1865, he was assassinated by Confederate sympathizer John Wykes Booth at Ford Theater in Washington, D.C. The attack came only five days after the American Civil War effectively ended with the surrender of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. The Civil War resolved two fundamental questions left unanswered by the Revolution. Whether the United States was to be a dissolvable confederation of sovereign states, or an indivisible nation with a sovereign national government. And whether this nation, born of a declaration that all men were created equal, with an equal right to liberty, would continue to exist as the largest slaveholding country in the world. The war was fought between the southern slave-owning states and the free states of northern and western America. The South's economy was based on a system of large-scale farming that depended on the labor of slaves to grow crops, especially cotton and tobacco. Growing sentiment in the North after the 1830s and Northern opposition to slavery's extension to the new Western territories led many Southerners to fear that the existence of slavery in America, and thus the backbone of their economy, was in danger. The Confederates were outnumbered, but had a strong military tradition, along with some of the best soldiers and commanders in the nation. The Confederates proved themselves a worthy opponent. However, Union victory at Anatom gave Lincoln a chance to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed all slaves in the rebellious states after January 1, 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation 
deprive the Confederacy of the bulk of its labor forces and put internal public opinion strongly on the Union side. Around 186,000 freed slaves joined the Union Army. The Union eventually defeated the Confederates with Lee's surrender at Apodomax Courthouse on April 9th. President Lincoln was assassinated just a few days after the war ended. The American Civil War was one of the bloodiest wars in history. The Chinese were hard workers who agreed to work for less money than white workers. On top of that, Chinese laborers would not slack off even when not under supervision. Many Americans began losing their work to the cheaper and more reliable work of Chinese immigrants. Afraid that the Chinese would take too many jobs from white workers, the U.S. government passed the Chinese Exclusion Act. This limited the number of Chinese that were allowed to enter the country. In only a year, the number of Chinese immigrants coming to America dropped from 20,000 to barely 200. This was the first time a law limited the entry of a specific ethnic working group. 